All right, here we go. The second POD that can be used when you play your Saga Fog on the Barrow Downs. All right, this is excellent. So I have two boons. I currently have Old Bogey Stories and Mr. Underhill. Old Bogey Stories lets me shuffle in a hand of at least six cards and then draw six cards. And then Mr. Underhill lets me stop an enemy that's engaged with me from attacking for the entire round. So these are two really good boons to have. And they both just go into the victory display, which means they come back for future scenarios. They are not removed from the campaign pool. Sam will be the storyteller. Frodo will hold on to Mr. Underhill and the ring. So he has the ring. And then I can use the ring and spend one of his resources to cancel an encounter card just revealed. I also have this burden, Gandalf's Delay. So on my first turn, I will not be drawing a card. And let's take a look at the campaign setup instructions. We got Tom's house right there, and it's just a multiplayer effect. So nothing that's gonna bother me. Let's take a look at my deck. Okay, so here is my deck. I am running the same three Hobbit heroes as before. Tactics Mary getting the attack boost and can ready somebody who participated in the attack with him. Pippin boosting enemies engagement and then drawing a card when I engage an enemy with a higher engagement. And then Sam, who can ready and gets a stat boost when I engage an enemy with a higher engagement. I will also be using the Black Riders Frodo again. So I was trying to think, what can I do for this build that is thematic for the Barrow Downs? And I decided to focus on pipes. So the Hobbits, they're on that hill in the middle of the day. They have themselves a good meal. And then they start smoking some pipes. And then eventually they take a nap. And then they wake up and it's it's dusk. The sun is setting. And so they make the terrible decision to head out into the dark when they should have just stayed on that hill. So I went with pipe. So we got hobbit pipe. We got spare pipe. We got smoke rings and smoke and think. I think that's pretty thematic for what happens. And of course, you have probably noticed these are all spirit cards. No spirit hero. So I do have three copies of Song of Travel and a ton of card draw just a ton so i should have no problem finding the song of travel i should have no problem drawing out this entire deck and so if i don't get song of travel in my opening hand i'll either take a mulligan or based on the other cards like if i have a deep knowledge and a drinking song or a frodo's intuition and a drinking song it actually makes more sense just to keep it because i can see more cards this way but uh yeah i should have no problem getting access to spirit and then it's just a matter of boosting willpower, uh, loading up with some dagger of Western A's on Mary so I can kill uh, any uh, whites that come after me. Uh, I got a single copy of the Hobbit Pony because, you know, the ponies were with them. They don't, the Hobbit Pony's not really useful in this build that much, but it's super thematic. But I think the most thematic card, obviously, is Tom Bombadillo. So, thematic art. Tom Bombadillo could come in and help me out, so... Uh, it would be really great if I can see Tom Bombadil. And then um, to avoid having the thing happen at the end of this quest where you keep getting trapped in barrows, uh, risk some light and shadow of the past to let me do some encounter deck manipulation to make sure I, av I avoid a great barrow coming out when I don't want it to. So that is my thematic build. Let's head back to the quest. We start out at the house of Tom Bombadil. We're going to set all the Great Barrows, the Standing Stone, and the Hollow Circle aside out of play. So there's all those cards. We'll just set those off to the side. Per the rules, I'm supposed to draw my opening hand before I do any of the quest setup. It just usually makes more sense for a video to show a little bit of the quest setup to explain what I'm looking for in my opening hand. Like I said, I'm looking for the Song of Travel or massive amounts of card draw. I should have no problem finding the song of travel and this deck you take a few rounds to get it set up and then it can really just kind of cruise through this quest uh, hobbit cloak on sam is pretty important because one enemy attacks for five and i think one attacks for four so it's really nice to get him defending for at least four hopefully five if i can get friend of friends on him and then 1B says we're going to skip the quest phase, and at the end of the round, we're going to place a progress there. So we're going to get a free round, which is really nice. Usually that means the quest is insanely hard, and you need a free round. But in this case, um, I, I don't really think we needed this free round. It's not that hard. All right, what do we got? Daron's Runes, Hobbit Pipe, Red Book, Card Draw, Card Draw, 
Fast hitch. Okay. So Daron's Runes and Deep Knowledge. That'll let me see four more cards. Deep Knowledge actually nets me some more cards. So Drinking Song would work to let me shuffle away more cards than if I just take a mulligan right now. So I'm going to keep that hand because if I play Deep Knowledge, then the Drinking Song works uh, even better than just taking a mulligan at the moment. So let's not draw a card at the start of the game because I have Gandalf's Delay. Everyone got their resources. Raise my threat by two for deep knowledge and draw two cards. All right, Shadows of the Past and Hobbit Pipe. I could play Daron's Runes to draw two more cards, but actually I think it makes more sense just to do a drinking song. So you count your number of cards and then you shuffle them into your deck and draw an equal number, plus one if you control a Hobbit hero. And so since I currently have six cards in hand and then because I have a Hobbit, I'll draw seven. Uh, that was better than taking a mulligan, because I'm going to get to see seven different cards instead of six. And I already played Deep Knowledge, so um, yeah, that's okay. I mean, I had all those spirit cards, two Hobbit pipes. I couldn't play those, because I don't have spirit access yet. So it makes more sense to do this drinking song at the moment. So let's see. Seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, Hobbit Pipe is back. Dagger of Western A's. Ha! Song of Travel. There we go. Uh, more card draw. Another Hobbit Pipe. And another Song of Travel. Okay, cool. Uh, Risk Some Light is pretty good. Okay, I got what I needed here. So let's do another Deep Knowledge. Draw two more cards. And we get Friend of Friends and the Shire Folk. Okay, excellent. Uh, now I, I make a little mistake here. I start playing my Hobbit Pipes, but even though they cost zero, you still need Spirit Access. So... I'm going to play the Hobbit Pipes, and they attach to a Hobbit character, and after you reduce your threat by an event, you exhaust the pipes to draw a card. But uh, yeah, I should have played the Song of Travel first, so I needed Spirit Access. So I will use, uh, let's see, I will use Sam's resource to put the Song of Travel in play. That would have let me play the Hobbit Pipes. Okay, I am now going to play the Shire Folk and drop my threat by four, because I only control Hobbit heroes. And because I just dropped my threat, I get to trigger two Hobbit pipes and draw two cards. So lots of card draw, like I said. Ah, good, there's Hobbit Cloak and another copy of Risk Some Light. Okay, very good. I also have that Dagger of Western A's, so plus two attack when you're attacking an enemy with a higher engagement cost. So Mary is now attacking for six. Nothing wrong with that. I am in secrecy right now, so let's play Risk Some Light. Secrecy is when your threat is 20 or lower, so this has a secrecy 3, so it's actually free to play. I get to look at the top 3 cards of the encounter deck, and I can put one at the bottom of the encounter deck and put the other two on top in any order. And I'm trying to make sure nothing terrible comes up. It's an endgame card, but I would kind of like to make sure I don't have something crazy happen right at the beginning. There we go! That Frozen by fear would have been my top card and that card is terrible you can't do anything it, it just shuts down all of your responses and actions it's doomed one and surge i mean it's just terrible so risk some light is going to put that on the bottom of the deck i don't want to see that one then i have chill fog and an enemy now chill fog is an effect that i really hate you have to discard all of your resources and then raise your threat by the amount that you discarded if you don't discard any resources, it surges. It's, it's, it's really nasty. So I'm going to spend all of my resources except one. So I'm going to put my single copy of Friend of Friends in play on Sam. It does nothing until I get a second copy. I got rid of Gandalf's Delay because that's done. Okay, at the end of the round, I place the progress. And then we are going to advance to stage two. Across the downs, when revealed, we're going to add the hollow circle to staging area. Then each player reveals one encounter card, and I already know what I'm revealing, so I know I'm not getting hit by two nasty encounter cards in a row. We have the hollow circle. It's a three threat, three progress, and then to travel there, we need to find a white and put it in play engaged with us. Okay, let's reveal Chill Fog. I will discard Frodo's resource and raise my threat by one, so that wasn't that bad. And then 2B is 14 progress, forced at the end of the refresh phase, raise your threat by one. That's easy to forget, so I'm gonna put a little token on my tracker here to help me remember that. And then, uh, yeah, let's go into the next round because all this happened at the end of the round. And so everybody was already ready 
and we're now we're just collecting resources and we will draw a card for the first time for real and it's Daron's runes okay cool so draw two cards discard one okay we got quick strike and another drinking song okay I do not need another song of travel so I'll get rid of that to Daron's runes and then I'm gonna use Sam's resource to give him a hobbit cloak so he'll be defending for four against an enemy with a higher engagement so I would like to get another friend of friends in play so he can defend for five when he engages the enemy Okay, and then uh, nothing else to play. I know I'm revealing a three threat enemy. I will not need to engage it, and then I can travel to the hollow circle and grab an enemy I can kill. So let's reveal this three threat enemy. So we've added three more threat. So we quested for seven against six. So we make one progress, and then we're gonna travel to the hollow circle, and that's gonna make us find a white and put it in play engaged of us. So I'm gonna find a white that I can handle. These enemies all have texts that say when it's engaged if you, you can't do something. So here this cold white uh, does not let you draw cards from card effects. So Pippin will not be able to draw me a card, but I'll be able to defend and kill this one. So I ready Sam because its engagement was higher than mine. Unfortunately, that means that card that I put on the bottom of the deck is now shuffled in. Would have been nice to never reveal it. And yeah, okay, so Sam's going to defend four against four, no shadow, so we're good there. And then Mary can swing for six and kill this thing. So that worked out well. And there's that token reminding me to raise my threat by an additional point. I definitely would have forgot. And let's go into the next round. The card we draw is Shadow of the Pass. Okay, I'm drawing all the cards that let me manipulate the encounter deck. And I really want to do that at the end of the game. So I think I will do Drinking Song and just hopefully draw these cards later. Like I said, there's tons of card draw on this deck. Like, a Frodo's Intuition would be great. So let's give the deck a shuffle, and I get to draw four cards. I'd really like Friend of Friends, so Sam can defend for five. And then I also would not mind some Fast Hitches. I don't have any yet, so some extra readying would be absolutely fantastic. And where are all my pipes? I only have two pipes. There's four more in the deck. Okay, four cards. Here we go. Uh, more card draw. There's a pipe, spare pipe, smoke rings, and a good meal. Okay, uh, good meal and smoke rings are a, are a great combo. So attach good meal to a hobbit hero, reduce the cost of the next event you play by two. That matches that hobbit sphere. Let's play spare pipe, attach to a character, any character, and then the attached character gets plus one hit point. And then when you play it, you get to search your top five cards for an event. So I will do that. Pippin will smoke this pipe. Now let's look at our top five cards. Ah, okay. Shirefolk would be pretty good. But I think I want to get Tom Bombadil in that encounter deck, and hopefully he'll make an appearance. It's tempting to drop my threat by four and then draw two cards from the Hobbit pipes. But let's get Tom in the deck, and so hopefully he'll show up. So I'm going to grab Ho Tom Bombadil and then give my deck a shuffle. Two cost lore event song. Play only if you control a Hobbit hero. You cannot play this card if there is a copy of Tom Bombadillo in the victory display. Planning action. Add Tom Bombadillo to the victory display to shuffle a set aside Tom Bombadil into the deck. Okay, so that's going to cost two lore resources. Tom is going into the deck. Hopefully he shows up and we can take a good look at him. So once again, giving the encounter deck a shuffle. So that's, you know, if you put some encounter deck manipulation stuff in your player decks. You always gotta be careful about when you're shuffling it because you could set something up and then accidentally shuffle it all up. But uh, okay, let's play Smoke Rings. So reduce your threat by one for each pipe you control. Each hero with a pipe attachment gets plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Okay, so I control three pipes, so I get to drop my threat by three. I'm using a good meal to pay for this. I just forget to discard it. And then uh, because I dropped my threat, I get to draw two cards and I get Shadows of the Pass and a Hobbit Pipe. Now, Smoke Rings is a lasting effect. It says each hero with a pipe gets plus one willpower to the end of the phase. So that's constantly recalculating. So Mary also has plus one willpower now. So everybody's smoking a pipe and everybody's got plus one willpower. And so that means Frodo will quest for three, Pippin for three, Sam for four, and I'm up against three. Okay, the card I get is, oh boy, Dreadful Song. 
Treachery, Enchantment, Peril, attached to a questing hero you control, counts as a condition attachment with the text limit one per hero. Attached hero's willpower is reduced to zero and then forced at the end of the round, raise your threat by one for each white enemy engaged with you. Oh man, I wish I had sent Mary on the quest. I didn't because if I revealed a different white enemy, I was hoping he could kill it. We got to use Frodo and we got to we gotta cancel this thing. So put the ring on and spend a resource and we're going to shuffle this back into the deck. I don't have any condition removal in this deck and I cannot lose one of my three questers. I have to shuffle this away and I really hope I don't reveal it again. Okay, instead of that, we get, okay, another Barrel White. So it's the, oh gosh, it's the same one that's out there. So it's the one that attacks for five with three threat. Oh, and I can't kill it with Mary right off the bat. Okay, that's not great. All right, I forgot to put the good meal in my discard pile. So we do clear the active, which is nice, and we make a progress. But now if I engage one of these guys, Sam is going to take a damage at least. And then Mary isn't going to be able to kill it. Yeah, that isn't good. I can't afford to have two attacks from this guy and take two turns to kill it. Not good. All right, raised my threat an additional one. Going into the next round, six threat and staging. That's not great. All right, and then... Oh, dang! All right, if I had known I was going to draw that... I would have definitely taken Shire Folk. All right, let's play Daron's Runes, see what I get. Uh, oh, gross. Okay, Song of Travel and the Staff. Now, Song of Travel, of course, I'm discarding. The Staff is nice because then Sam can discard a Shadow, so then I know he's only going to take one damage. But I still don't like being engaged with that white for two rounds. I'm in a bit of trouble here. That's pretty unlucky to get those two guys up in staging when I can't quite kill it. If I had Quick Strike, then I could engage, damage, and then Quick Strike it the next round and kill it. I'm just gonna send everybody, because I'm up against six, and, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> the dreadful song is back. Okay, well, at least this time I sent Mary, so he's normally not questing, so I'll drop his threat. Uh, I'll drop his willpower from the quest. We make one progress. I can't engage these guys. Oh boy. I am, I'm stuck right now. I'm top decking. I have six threat and staging. I can't kill either of these two enemies. Uh, that's not good. I might have to use Mr. Underhill. And then I draw Shadows of the Past. I don't, uh, I don't need that right now. I really don't need it. Okay, maybe Mr. Underhill will have to make an appearance and stop the attack so I have enough attack power to kill this thing. Uh, okay, so if I send uh, the three hobbits that can quest, I'm just up by one right now. The quest is on the uh, edge of a knife, and I get... I'm waiting for you. When revealed, each white enemy engaged if a player makes an immediate attack. If no attacks are made this way, I'm waiting for you gain surge. Yeah, that's another reason I didn't want to keep that enemy engaged with me. So this is just going to surge, okay, and then we get... Oh my goodness. All right, Frozen by Fear, Surge, Doomed One. Until the end of the round, I cannot trigger responses or actions. All right, Doomed One and Surge. That's such a nasty card. Surge is into an Ancient Barrel, uh, X Threat. X is one plus the number of face down cards under it for progress. After it enters play, each player places an ally he controls underneath, blah, 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 blah. I do not have any allies in this deck because this quest has a lot of ally hate. So that was just a one threat, which means I made no progress and we will travel there. I'm definitely not engaging anything because I can't trigger actions or responses. Next round, that's going to help. Halfling Determination. Okay, Halfling Determination means I can kill one of these guys. So uh, that works. Let's go questing again for seven against six. And we get, oh no, oh no, it's a chill fog. I gotta cancel it. There is no way I can raise my threat by whatever it would be. It's so much. So we gotta shuffle that into the deck and uh, reveal something else. And instead we get a long groping arm. All right, when revealed until the end of the phase, each white enemy engaged with you contributes its threat to the staging area. If there is no white enemies engaged with you search the encounter deck and discard pile for a white enemy and put it in play engaged with you all right well i guess i am not engaging an enemy 
from the staging area this round. Yikes. Well, the good news is a copy of Tom Bombadil was on the bottom of the deck, and now it's getting shuffled in, so at least I can hopefully reveal it at some point. All right, uh, well, uh, that readies Sam and boosts his willpower, so I actually quest for one more. Pippin draws me a fast hitch, finally. Finally have a fast hitch. And believe it or not, we make two progress. Okay, like I said, not going to engage anything. If I had a fast hitch on Sam, I still wouldn't want to. Sam's going to defend. He's going to get rid of the shadow. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I didn't want to shuffle it to the very top. Ah, okay, that... <laughs> Oh my goodness, nothing's going right. So I took a damage from that attack, and then Mary's going to be able to swing for enough with some Halfling Determination, boosting his attack power by two to kill this guy. Now, let's think for a minute, though. Shadow cards don't get discarded when you reveal them, when, when you flip them over, I mean. They actually stick around. So when you destroy an enemy, the shadow card gets dis gets discarded with it, and you get to choose the order. So I'm actually going to put Tom Bombadil on top of the encounter discard pile when I killed that enemy. And now it's on top of the discard pile, and I have Shadow of the Past in my hand. That's actually not bad. All right, and then we get... Oh, that's excellent. I get Smoke and Think. Okay, so that reduces the cost of the next card I play by the number of pipes I control. So let's put a fast hitch on Sam. So he can do two defenses now or help in combat. So uh, that's extremely useful. So having a fast hitch finally is going to help me out a lot. And then, yeah, Shadow of the Past, two neutral resources, and then you get to put the top card of the discard pile on top of the deck. So Tom Bombadil is what I'm revealing. This is a Tom Bombadil that comes with this actual encounter set. So I know I'm revealing that. All right, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna catch up here now. All I need is a little card draw, and we're going to finally be able to get moving. So sending Sam and Frodo and Pippin, we're sending seven, and reveal Tom Bombadil. So he's a 3336. I get control of him. He's ready and committed to the quest. That's going to boost my willpower by three, which means I clear this active location, and I get to place a couple progress on the quest. Okay, excellent. At the end of the round, Tom and the discard pile get shuffled into the encounter deck, but I'm fine with that. We engage a white. I draw a card. Ah, yes, smoke rings. Okay, excellent. And Sam is ready and boosted. All right, that is really good. So that's some card draw. We're going to have Sam defend because he can get rid of the shadow card. And you should always get rid of a shadow card if you can. Uh, it has a shadow. And to the end of the round, attacking enemy can't take damage. There you go. That's why you get rid of shadows when you can. All right, Sam has two damage. So that's, that's a little scary. I do have a little bit of healing in this deck. Okay, Sam can ready. Mary's ready. And Tom Bombadil is ready. So we can kill this guy. And we got rid of three threat out of the staging area. So uh, that was extremely successful. Okay, end of the round. Tom goes back into the encounter deck along with the entire discard pile. So let's raise our threat by two. I'll tell you what. That hasn't been great that I've had to raise my threat by two for like five rounds. Normally this deck quests through this stage in about two rounds. I mean... Maybe three. It just normally gets a ton of willpower between Frodo's intuition, the red book, and smoke rings that I don't have any problems. But, man, the card draw just dried right up. Any copies of my Frodo's intuitions would be really good. All right, all right, cool. Uh, we get another pipe. So spare pipe. I'm going to put that on Sam because now he'll get plus one hit point. So that's good. So now he has an extra hit point. And I get to search my top five cards for an event. Come on, Frodo's Intuition. That's what I'm looking for. There it is. It was the next card. So I will take Frodo's Intuition. That's going to boost all my Hobbit's willpower. And it will draw me four cards. I feel like this turn I'm probably going to draw 20 cards is probably what's going to happen here. So let's play that. Four cards coming. One, two, three, four. And we get a uh, quick strike. Another spare pipe. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, the Shire Folk and stuff. Okay, just watch this. This is going to be one of those crazy turns. So, a spare pipe coming in. Frodo's got plus one. Now we're going to look at the top five. Uh, okay, there's old Toby. So that's a way for me to heal Sam. And I'm also going to draw like five cards with it. So yeah, okay, here we go. I, I told you there's a lot of card draw. I just had to hit it. Okay, old Toby. Draw one card for each pipe I control. 
and heal one damage from each hero with a pipe. Okay, so Sam's going to heal one, so he's got three hit points now, and that costs two. So if I wanted to, I could play Smoke and Think and play it for free, basically. But uh, I actually don't mind spending resources right now because those chill fogs are pretty nasty. All right, but I control five pipes, so <laughs> let's draw five cards. Yeah, that's a lot of cards drawn. Okay, uh, Drinking Song, another Frodo's Intuition. There's another Dagger. That's what I've been looking for. And some more Threat Reduction. Okay, so I think you could see if I just gotten a little luckier, like just one Frodo's Intuition three turns ago, I probably could have got the deck set up a lot quicker and uh, been able to take out these whites, but I just ran into a little bit of a slow spot. All right, Shire Folk dropping my Threat. I actually forget I have another Hobbit Pipe, so I only draw two cards. One of them is a deep knowledge, but um, I definitely don't need to draw more cards right now. So let's put a fast hitch on Mary. And I'm just trying to spend resources so those chill fogs uh, don't make me thread out. So, so Pippin will spend one resource to pay for that fast hitch. And I already put a dagger on him. I don't need to drop my threat by more because I already triggered the Hobbit pipes. So, yep. Yeah. Let's put another dagger on Sam so he can swing for a little more. No, Pippin. No, Frodo. All right, let's put on Frodo. Here you go, Frodo. That's thematic, right? He use, Doesn't he use one of these daggers to cut off the hand off that groping arm going for that sword across the hobbit's necks? Okay, I have lots of ways to boost my willpower, so we should be able to make a ton of progress. They're all boosted by one right now because of Frodo's intuition. So... Uh, sending everybody but Mary, who's not allowed to quest. Well, he could, but his, his willpower is zero. And we get, oh, for goodness sakes, another Frozen by Fear. Surge, Doomed One, and I can't trigger anything? I gotta, I gotta cancel this again. That's the third time now that I've tried to avoid this treachery, and it keeps popping up. All right, so Frodo put on the ring, and instead we get, okay, good, a stone ring. Okay. So that's just three threat, which means we're going to make four progress. And no matter what I do, I don't think I'd be able to actually make enough to clear this. So we're going to travel to the stone ring. We're going to engage this white. I get to draw a card. It draws me card draw. So I will draw two cards. There's my red book. Okay. Well, like I said, I've almost drawn out all my cards. So let's get rid of this deep knowledge. I'm not going to need to draw anything else. And we're getting attacked. So Sam will defend. Sam will use his staff to get rid of the shadow. And he's actually going to take another damage because of this. And there is no shadow. Okay, that's good. And then Mary can definitely swing back with his two blades. So <laughs> I would have thought with all these cards I would have grabbed another friend of friends. But I didn't. But that's okay. All right. So I still have Mr. Underhill if I get in some sort of situation that I need to cancel an attack. But yeah, we're ready. We're ready to progress to stage three. This deck struggled a lot more at the beginning of the game than any of my playthroughs with it to get ready for this video. Kind of funny. All right, there's friend of friends. All right, I just needed to draw one more card. All right, so now Mary's swinging for one more and Sam is defending for one more. And Sam is also questing for one more. And he's gonna be able to quest for one more because smoke and think reduces the cost of the next card I play by the number of pipes I control. So Red Book is going on Frodo for free. That's going to give all my hobbits plus one willpower if Frodo's committed to the quest. And then if I quest successfully, he's gonna gain a resource. I'm gonna spend two resources on smoke rings. So all of my hobbits are now plus one and I get to drop my threat for every pipe I control. So there we go, uh, smoking for the win. And then I still forget that I have three hobbit pipes in play. I don't see that one sitting there on Sam, uh, but I do draw two cards and fast hitch going on Sam. So now he has two readies. Yeah, we're, we're ready. Look at all this willpower boosting I have and threat reduction I'm not even playing. So uh, we're good to go. We are good to go. I'm sending Frodo who's currently boosted by two thanks to smoke rings and the red book. Pippin's boosted by two. So that's eight. Sam is boosted by three because of the Red Book, Smoke Rings, and Friend of Friends. So there we go. The Hobbits are questing fools. They want to get the heck out of here. And we are sending a total of 14 against nothing. And we get Chill Fog. 
Oh boy. Okay, how many resources do I have? I have I have six, so I have to raise my threat by six. That's fine. I have tons of threat reduction in my hand still, so um, we we can we can definitely handle that. Well, I don't know if I have tons. I know I have at least four, but I've played a lot, so we're okay. We're okay. All right, so we quested for a lot with nothing revealed, and we finally get to advance to stage three. Lost in the fog when revealed, the first player adds standing stones to the staging area. Each other player reveals one encounter card, shuffle the encounter discard pile, and each copy of the Great Barrow into the encounter deck. So Standing Stones is a 4-4, it's immune, and to travel there, the first player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a Great Barrow and adds it to the staging area. So I'm going to be traveling there, so I'm only going to shuffle in all but one of these Great Barrows, since I would just have to dig it out anyway. So let's shuffle in these and the encounter discard pile. So I'm adding a Great Barrow to the staging area. It's a 1-1, Peril, Immune, I can't travel there, and then Forced, after it enters the staging area, I remove each character from the quest, I make my own staging area, and I advance to a separate stage 4A by myself. Okay, so now I need to go to 4A because I did travel to the Standing Stones and a Great Barrow entered the staging area. So let's take a look at 4A. Trapped inside a barrow, when revealed, End your quest phase. Do not resolve the quest. Discard cards from the encounter deck until a white enemy is discarded. Add the discarded white enemy to the staging area. Discard all but X allies you control, where X is the number of enemies you are engaged with. Another reason not to bring allies on this quest. All right, discarding until we get a white. There goes Tom again. Gosh darn it. And there we go. Okay, so we got a white. It's going to be engaged with me. That's going to, of course ready Sam and I believe this is the one that does not let me draw a card so okay I gotta create two staging areas basically so if you were playing multiplayer obviously this would have a bigger effect because one of you is gonna get separated from the group which is uh, pretty darn thematic let's take a look at 4b nine progress needed forced when a location is revealed at this stage cancel its effects and discard it then raise your threat by that cards threat including modifiers and then forced after the stage is defeated, advance to stage 3B at the beginning of the travel phase, combining staging areas with stage 3B, and place one progress on a Great Barrow at that stage. Okay, so the, I mean, it's pretty cool, and you're separated, and then you have to try to get back, and everybody else can't advance until you do get back, so you kind of want to plan whoever's going to be the first player when this happens, because you know the first player is for sure getting separated. And there's four more Great Barrows in the deck, so this could happen again to any player because of how staging works in the campaign mode. So, all right, I am by myself now at stage four. I put all those other cards out of play for the moment. The white I'm engaged with won't let me draw cards from player card effects, but it does ready Sam. And he's boosted, so let's have him defend, get rid of the shadow. Ha! Huh, it's a great barrel. Okay, I'm glad to see that go away. Uh, that's now the top card of my discard pile, unless I put the enemy as my top card. But I think I'm okay based on the cards I have in hand. I don't need to worry about the top card. So let's go into the next round. And I did forget to trigger the Red Book of Westmarch, because I always do. So I'm going to remember that in a moment and give Frodo an extra resource from questing successfully. And we drew Risk Some Light, which is uh, a card I actually would love to play. And I also had Shadows of the Past. So uh, those are the two cards I need when I get out of here. Okay, let's play Shire Folk. I'm going to drop my threat by four. And I have three Hobbit Pipes, although I keep forgetting I have the third one. So I'm going to draw, whoops, two cards. Um, wow, okay, big Willpower Boost and a big Stat Boost card. So there we go. Uh, two copies of Frodo's Intuition, Smoke and Think. Yeah, I can I can pretty much play anything. So let's send Frodo. Uh, there's me remembering that the Red Book should have gave him a resource last round from questing successfully. So he is questing for three. Pippin for three because of the Red Book. And then Mary can't quest. And Sam is questing for five thanks to the Red Book and Friend of Friends. So three plus three plus five is plenty, and I reveal a two threat enemy. I just can't hold on to cards right now. My hands must be cold from the uh, barrel downs here. So two threat, uh, I make enough, so we clear that, very good. And then we come back to stage three. 
which means everything that was in stage three staging area is back, including this great barrel that I am supposed to put one progress on from clearing stage four. Okay, there's me remembering the red book. I got it, almost got it right that time. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now we're in combat and I'm gonna engage this white and I get to draw a card, I get to ready Sam. Card I draw is another Hobbit cloak. I think I only have one card left. Sam can defend against this white and I can discard the shadow. So there's nothing to worry about here. Combat is not very threatening. Goodbye, goodbye that stupid card. And then Mary's gonna kill this guy. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna put the white on top of the deck because here's where I really need to make sure I do not reveal a great barrow. If you reveal a great barrow right here on this round when you're trying to win the game, you have to go back to that four stage four thing and you're you're basically just like restarting from stage four again so putting in a little bit of tech to stop yourself from revealing a great barrel right here is a great idea a lot harder to do in multiplayer but in solo uh it's not that bad so i could use shadows of the past to put that enemy on top of the encounter deck but let's play risk some light using smoke and think so i don't have to pay for it because I have plenty of pipes. Okay, here are my three cards. So a one threat ancient barrow, a three threat stone ring, or uh, white enemies engaged with me would add their threat. Hmm. Uh, if I don't have a white engage with me, I find one. All right, I'm just gonna add the one threat location. That just seems to make the most sense. Only adding one threat. I've already played Frodo's Intuition. I know I don't have Anything I need to cancel coming, so I can play a second Frodo's Intuition. I've already drawn all my cards, but let's boost each of my questing hobbits by two. So I'll be able to send a total of 17. And I realized watching this video, I never drew Hobbit Pony. So I guess I forgot to put it in the deck when I built it, which is thematic, because they all ran away, right? So uh, no Hobbit Ponies, but like I said, they're not really useful in this um, quest with this build. I don't need to hold back hobbits and then decide to add them to the quest later if you put 11 c's in your deck it works okay ancient barrel getting revealed i have no allies so that's just a one threat and we sent 17 but then uh i have two copies of halfling determination so that's going to boost let's say sam by four more so yeah we're at 21 and we're up against one so we made 20 progress so four goes there and then uh, 16 goes there and that is enough to get us the win. All right, that was excellent. It got a little hairy there for a while, but we were able to basically cruise through here at the end. Let's see what happens. Uh, we have earned this boon. It's Ho, Tom Bombadil. So the first player adds this card to their hand, and then you can add it to the victory display and remove it from the campaign pool to cancel the when revealed effects of an encounter card. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that one. Up next, we're heading to Bree for a knife in the dark. Make sure you load your pockets up with a bunch of apples because we have somebody that we're going to want to toss them at. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye.